be ready 5 seconds i am glad to be here today on the historic occasion of constitution day on this day 73 years ago the constituent assembly adopted this document of our collective destiny we are commemorating today the adoption of the constitution that has not only guided the journey of the republic over the decades but has also inspired several other nations in the drafting of their constitutions the constituent assembly was composed of elected members who represented all the regions and communities of the nation they included stalwarts of our freedom movement thus their debates and the document they prepared reflect the values that guided the struggle for independence when we read the names of the members of the assembly we are bound to feel a surge of pride the decades before independence were marked by an unusual number of extraordinary individuals i sincerely believe that no other place and no other time have produced a galaxy of giants like them they had their own dreams and ideas about the character of this nation but they were united in their desire to see it freed of shackles they all made great sacrifices to ensure that the coming generations would breathe the air of a free nation the first among them all of course was the father of the nation the visionary leadership of mahatma gandhi created a generation of great leaders the constitution bears an unmistakable stamp of gandhian principles equally the president of the constituent assembly and also my great predecessor dr rajendra prasad and the chairman of the drafting committee dr b r ambedkar converted a grand vision into words i am especially proud of the fact that the 389 members also included 15 women when some of the leading nations in the west were still debating women's rights in india women were participating in the framing of the constitution hansa ben mehta one of them also made a critical contribution in the drafting of the universal declaration of human rights sarojini naidu sucheta kripalini durga bai deshmukh and other women members were already seasoned campaigners having dedicated themselves to the freedom movement speaking of women i would like to note that their participation in public life since independence has shown an upward trend but there is no reason to be content i understand the judiciary too strives to enhance 
gender balance. The cornerstone of the constitution is summed up in its preamble. Its singular focus is on how to increase social good. Its entire edifice rests on justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. I would like to note here that these four stellar values enshrined in our constitution have been part of our own timeless heritage. When we speak of justice, we understand it is an ideal and achieving it is not without obstacles. Here I must mention my immediate predecessor, Sri Ramnath Kovind, who often stressed on the cost of justice. The onus is on all of us to make the process of seeking justice affordable to all. I appreciate the efforts made by the judiciary in this direction. The Legal Aid Society and similar initiatives are worth praising and so are individual initiatives to provide legal counseling for free. The question of access often goes beyond cost matters. The Supreme Court of India and several other courts now make judgments available in a number of Indian languages. This praiseworthy gesture makes an average citizen a stakeholder in the process. It can also raise their awareness as well as the quality of public debates. Still, the legal language, its complicated expressions and jargon are challenging for most people. I understand that this matter has been debated in the judiciary too. Let us hope the day is not far when more and more people from outside the legal fraternity too will be able to read important judgments. The Supreme Court and several other courts have started live streaming their proceedings, which too will go a long way in making citizens effective stakeholders in the dispensation of justice. The Constitution outlines a map for good governance. The most crucial feature in this is the doctrine of separation of functions and powers of the three organs of the state, namely the executive, the legislature and the judiciary. It has been the hallmark of our republic that the three organs have respected the boundaries set in place by the Constitution. Each of the three aims, after all, to serve the people. It is understandable that in the zeal to best serve the interests of citizens, one or the other of the three organs may be tempted to overstep. Yet, we can say with satisfaction and pride that the three have always attempted to keep the boundaries in mind while doing their best to function 
in the service of the people.